and we're back filming again and we're talking about soil and how to enrich the soil and um, I sound as if I'm an expert, <laughs> I haven't an absolute clue but no. if you do look at previous clips we've done, we've done two previous clips, one clip was on actual what? Well uh, the types of soil and how you work out what type of soil you've got. And we have that listed under types of soil, do yeah, we? Yeah, well or? we'll have it under soil, it'll all be under soil and soil improvement. Okay. And we also did one then on the varying types of organic matter you can use to um, improve the, the aeration and the quality of your soil. Okay, uh, so right. So, so now we're on to this our time. We're looking yeah. at fertilizer. 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 Okay, fertilizer. <laughs> now, okay. So I wonder can anybody guess what we've got here? Don't eat it, please. No cream and sugar. I have to say, <laughs> Susan, the smell is absolutely revolting. Look, there's even a feather in here. It's ch uh, pelleted uh, chicken manure, which you can buy oh. in big tubs. And what you do with this is, if you're growing your veg or if you're plant sowing something or planting, take out, spread it on the soil, and mix it in a couple of days before you're doing your um, your sowing. If you're doing veg or something, or round your you can dress round your plants with it. But try not to touch the actual if they're young tender plants. Try not to touch the actual plant. With Why it. is that? Well, it can actually scorch because it's strong, and you know it, it's an a strong fertilizer you can actually scorch the plant so it absolutely but stinks i mean sorry this, it is so smelly it's i can actually find that quite pleasant but then i'm agricultural uh, you're <laughs> agricultural i'm nearly going in saying oh my god i think i'm going to be ill but something like this is great for the soil because there's also a certain amount of organic matter in those pellets now you say this is from Chickens. 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 So, chickens. I mean, but are these organic free range chickens? I have no idea. I Isn't don't know. That it's very you buy it in big tubs, so I have no idea. I presume they take be. the manure from, they may take it from intensive poultry houses and buy it and put it in the container. Okay, well, if anybody it. does know where this actually, you know, is I'd it from it the it organic or the free range or what? It would be from probably from all. Be from, from oh, so there's a mixture, and then you put that in, and you put it into your vegetables or your plants. Or your plants, yeah. Okay, General just to get my head clear yeah. on this, and you don't put in a huge amount. It'll tell you on on whatever you buy. It'll tell you how much to use per square meter for varying types of planting. Okay, right. So that's yeah, one. That's I one. feel as if I'm doing a cooking right. course. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is something about um, fertilizer. Generally, there's nitrogen, phosphate, and potash. Oh, now if you right. see something, you if you buy a fertilizer in the shop, you'll see N, P, and K on it, right? Nitrogen, phosphate, and potash, and it'll give you the balance, the, the ratio of one to the other. And do they normally balance that? Do they normally have the standard sort of equal one amount? The standards mix for sort of general purpose gardening, tree and shrub, or something like that is seven, seven, seven. Okay. Now there are varying different balances. You hear agricultural ones of ten, ten, twenty. People talk about and they depending. But for the general run of the mill, the nitrogen is for the top growth, for the green growth. Oh, um, nice. The phosphate is for the root growth. Right. And the potash is for your fruit and flowers. So potash so is very important. Potash is important. If you have a wood fire, they say, what you can do with the ash is if you have apple trees, spread it around your apple trees. Oh, wow. Basically your apple okay, because that's, so that's the potash going into the fruit. Yeah. So okay. that's the general oh. sort of in nitrogen phosphate and potash. They're the main things. You then have the trace elements like the rock water, like boron, iron, molybdenum. And like they do manganese. other sort of, do they, they do mix other up with the other? Yes, yeah, you only need, uh, they're called trace elements, so there's minute quantities. Of okay. And there'll right. be a certain amount in this. So would there be all, would we have potash, calcium, and nitrogen in this? Uh, you have uh, MP and K, yes, yeah, nitrogen yeah. phosphate and potash. And I think there's also a little bit of iron. And um, calcium. And Filming under an umbrella so at this, the moment because the weather's been so dreadful. Is a slow release fertilizer, which you'd use ideally in your your tubs and pots and things, or if you're on the balcony. Oh, now like this is important then for our apartment people. Well, yes, it's of a handy. You, you don't need that much of it. You'd sprinkle it on your tubs and pots. And Just things. at the top. 
Yeah, or just gently sort of into the top part of the soil. Or do we mix it in with the soil? You no. could mix a bit in with the soil, but and if, just leave it if a you've bit got on. something in a pot which you're keeping on for several years, yeah. you can add some of this. You can just and what's this called, Susan? This is a slow release, general purpose part of feed. Okay. Now it's got a balance of the nitrogen, phosphate and potash obviously, and it's got quite a lot of trace elements, iron, calcium, manganese, and things like that. And it, as it's, it's water soluble, but it slowly breaks down and releases the fertilizer. So this is very useful for, as I say, if you're balcony growing and you want to feed your plants every year. And you just scrape away a little bit of the old compost, add a little bit of fresh maybe, and some of this. Now, c well, where is this from? How is that made? Oh, oh. No, I, I haven't a clue. It, it's made in some chemical process factory oh, it, it, somewhere. So it's a man-made? It's a man-made. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. It's I not see. something else. It's, like not, like it's not, not like the chicken. It's not like the chicken. No. Right, okay, so it's a man made. So I don't know what you know, right, how okay. it's done. I've never right. seen well, the process. Yeah, okay. But it's a very useful thing for um, feeding pots and things like that. You can also use it, obviously, in your borders and things, and sprinkling it around and letting it break down into the soil. Okay. But and using something like this, you would want to also be using um, you know, a mulch to keep the, the aeration and the health of the soil. So although it would feed the plants if you have a heavy clay soil that's very tightly packed and everything, oh, yes. it won't be as good as if you also manage to work so some much organic true. matter into the soil and the air and the um, moisture in as well. Yeah, I never so. understood about the air and the moisture, but do look at our clips about soil because we explain, at least yeah. Susan and also explains all about aerating and the worms and, and putting in and the mulch. And you need that, you need that aeration for the um, bacteria and the microbes to be able to work the stuff into the soil and to, to release the uh, fertilizer and plant foods for the plants okay. to be available for the plants. Right, okay. Yeah, so um, we'll have more on fertilizer. We're also going to be checking the acidity, aren't we? Oh yes, we? we have to do something with alkaline and acid soil. Yeah, so the there will be another we'll be clip which we're going to be filming now in the next few days, but it's the thing you put into your soil to check. Well, it's just so you know what what, what the acidity or alkalinity of your soil and what you can grow, what the sticks you're growing and what you can Well, you see, isn't that very important for people who buy rhododendrons? Well, exactly. Rhododendron seeded acid soils, there's no good if you lived in a really sort of area of high alkalinity to try and grow rhododendrons. They're just horrible. They just won't flower. They won't. Properly. They won't flourish. They'll be yellow and horrible. And oh, right. Okay. Well, that's very informative, I must say. If you have any ideas about fertilizing um, or using, I mean, what do you call this sort of? That's pelleted. Pelleted. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's but if you have any ideas, fertilizer. do come on to us in Gardenville. We want to hear from you. Come on the forum, Facebook us, Twitter us. We do want you to join in in the fun of gardening.